baby. It's real simple. Amen. Some of the stuff that got that's causing you to have headaches, migraines, causing your blood pressure to rise up, causing you to be cranky around the house. You can't spouse scared of your children scared of you. Because you want everything else. Seek me first and my kingdom. And all the other stuff. You running yourself crazy over stuff. The young prophet told us, God, just give me you. Everything else. Just, just give me you. Young fellow that prayed before he sang, he said, I've lost a whole lot. Brother Prophet ain't 13 years old. But lost a lot. Seen grandfather, grandmother, seen family members. But said, God, but I'm still here, God. I'm satisfied with you, God. Give me you, God. Because with you comes the joy, comes the, the happiness, the peace, and the long suffering, God. Out of the bowels of babies. Our children have ministered to us. They sang a song and just said they want to just thank God. Little babies, they had so much thankfulness in them. They, they had to give their own space and their own place, and they they lifted up praise to God. Some could barely stand, but lifted up praises to God. The young fellow that prayed, praying, thanking God despite everything. And a young prophet that sang the song, that God just give me you. A lot of we're a lot happy if we can start out with that first request right there. Let everything else fall in place. Thank God for Sunday morning. That's what even babes can minister to our spirits. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Come on, let's give another hand up for you. We're about today, we're going to look at the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 4 through 10. Gospel of Matthew chapter 3 verses 4 through 10. This is what the scripture says. It says, John's clothes were woven from camel hair, and he wore a leather belt. His food was locust and wild honey. People from Jerusalem and from every section of Judea and from all over the Jordan Valley went out to the wilderness to hear him preach. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to be baptized, he denounced them. You brood of snakes, he exclaimed. Who warned you to see God's coming judgment? Prove by the way you live that you have really turned from your sins and turn to God. Don't just say we're safe, but we're the descendants of Abraham. That proved nothing. God can change these stones here into children of Abraham. Even now, the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever your roots. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. The title of today's word is something got a hold of me. Something got a hold of me. I think it's important to pay very close attention to the type of religious people we choose to associate with. You catch what I said? I didn't just say people. I think it's very important that we pay very close attention to the type of religious people we choose to associate with. People can have an impression on your perception and expectations in life. For 400 years, there has been silence between the, the Old Testament and the New Testament. 400 years of a silence represented in our canonical scriptures. And then John came to prepare the way of the Lord. 400 years of silence. From the Old Testament to the New Testament. And then John came to prepare the way 
for the Lord. John the Baptist was a, a Hebrew itinerant preacher. I mean, he didn't just stay one place. He was subject to be sent somewhere else at the drop of a dime. That's why you can't get caught up on the preacher. Get caught up on what they're preaching. Amen. Because God uses here and there. And John was an itinerant, a Hebrew itinerant preacher in the early first century A.D. Other titles for John include John the Forerunner. That was in early Christianity known as John the, the Forerunner. John the Immerser in some Baptist tradition. That's why you... That's why in the in many Baptist tradition there's a real strong emphasis on full immersion. He was known as John the Immerser. And, and he was also known as the Prophet John in Islam. They recognized him as the Prophet John. He is sometimes alternatively called John the Baptizer. But we know him as John the Baptist. All right, all right, all right. In verses 4 through 6 of Matthew, we see where the scripture says John's clothes were, were woven from, from camel hair. And he wore a leather belt. His food was locust and, and wild honey. And then the scripture says, people from Jerusalem and from every section of Judea and from all over the Jordan, they went out to the wilderness to hear John preach. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them right there in the Jordan River. John, he, he sacrificed himself for the sake of ministry. Wasn't about him. He didn't have to have the finest clothes. He didn't have to have the finest things. He didn't have to be known by every one and set up on a John. He sacrificed himself and his own comfort for the sake of ministry, and he put in work to produce in his home. That's something that we could really, really use today. Folk that's willing to, to put in the word. I mean, God is the kind of God the way if you just trust him and listen to him, you're going to see production in what he calls you to do. But if you're lazy, you expect everything to come to you. If you just want to sit down and think it's just going to all happen by saying abracadabra, it's not going to happen. You'll sit and you'll have it. A perfectly fine-tuned faith that can't even produce because you're not willing to put in the work. But John was less concerned about his own comfort and more concerned about doing what God had called him to do. Our theme for this conference year is speak the solution, not the excuse. There's nothing new under the sun. Yes, sir. Your excuses ain't surprising God like God. Oh, I never thought that that could be a problem. <laughs> Any excuse we can make, God's already seen it and already provided a way of escape. But the power of life and death lie in the tongue. If we forever speak excuses, death is sitting at our doorstep waiting. But when we speak solution, God is glorified. I look at John in ministry and can say in the affirmative that John put in the word and results followed. See, nowadays folk think that, you know, you just, you, you just go and you just, you, you just get this thing called ministry. 
Mm. You just, you get it. You wake up one day and tell the world, the Lord has called me to preach the gospel. And then all of a sudden, everything is just laid in your hand. Anybody ever heard the saying, I don't look like what I've been through? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. My God. Folk look at preachers that seem to be getting some increase and seem to be getting some production in kingdom work, but don't realize that what you look at don't look like what they've been through. You don't have a clue to how many lies been lied. You don't have a clue to how many scandals and darts have been thrown in that direction. Go ahead, preacher. John, he put the work in and got results. I used to coach a little before my daughter. She played basketball. And I used to coach the little girls' basketball team. And you see some parents, they come out there and want to do all this fussing because <laughs> their child ain't getting in the game. But y'all ain't have time to practice during the week. Had all this stuff to do, and that's fine, go do your stuff. But we ain't 21st century sports. We're trying to win. I know 21st century they just play, you know, play. But now we playing to win. We want to have fun, but it's fun when you win. Yeah. And so for everybody that just like just to be run around and that's disappointed in me, you're going to be disappointed because of everything I plan to win. Uh -huh. I ain't fighting this fight that I'm fighting right now against the enemy. Amen. To, to, I'm playing to win. Think I'm living this life just to die and die? I'm dying to get somewhere. Right. Playing the, and you see parents, they get all upset. But don't understand that you got to put the work in. And even if you put the work in that week and then just keep putting the work in, you don't get to say when the increase is going to happen. But John, he put the work in and it said that he didn't even need a pulpit. Uh -huh. That's right. It said that people followed him out in the wilderness. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh -huh. I'm sure most of y'all notice I got glasses on today. Yeah. Yeah, we see well. And that's because the, the tread is wearing in my ties. <laughs> and I finally broke down. In Bible study, that the cords is real small. And I went to go and get a, a Greek translation, and, and it don't matter which way I would turn my head, it just was blue. And so I told my wife, and she took me to, to go get some. She called and made an appointment. And in a couple of hours, I was in there getting my eyes blowed and blasted and just all kind of stuff. But I got some glasses now. But when we paid for them, I thought that what we paid was the regular price. I ain't before. But then I heard some people talking about glasses. And I looked at my wife and said, what did, how we spend all the money on glasses? They, they, they didn't say nothing. I ain't know they had cheaper glasses. She said, look at the side. Versace. But John the Baptist didn't need, let me put them on here, y'all let me blur. John the Baptist, he didn't need Versace glasses. He didn't need. I don't even know name brand stuff. I can go to still go to the top wallets. Gucci, he didn't need Gucci wallets. The Bible says that John was out there preaching without a pulpit in the wilderness with woven clothes from camel's hair. John didn't need to impress anybody and the Bible says that results follow. Folk don't care about your Versace, your Gucci, your Fendi, your whatever. Folk don't care about, folk care about your anointing. And it's 
sacrificed himself for the sake of the ministry. And then it goes on in verses 7 through 9. And the scripture says, but when he saw many, look at your neighbor and say, religious people. <laughs> when he saw the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming to be baptized, it says he denounced them. One thing about Jesus, you can fool everybody else talking about you this and you that. You can fool everybody talking about your faith and this and that. But one person you can't fool is God. Everybody else run behind and they, even though your fruit don't look like Jesus, even though, the, even though your fruit don't even look like the Spirit of God, you're so into, into protecting the middle class you can care less about the poor. You're so into cutting your own taxes, you can care less about the people sleeping on the streets. You're, you're so into your own and what you get out of it that you don't even fight for what he fought for. I'm happy to be middle class, but Jesus, when he came, he could care less about me and my middle class. He cared about the poor. And when I get to the place, to where the battles I fight are more fierce for those that are doing well mm. than it is for those who are hurting, oppressed, and downtrodden. I can fool everybody else, but I can't fool God. You can dump as much water on me, you can hold me up under the water and baptize me in all kind of names, but I can't fool God. And the Bible says that when the Pharisees and Sadducees, when he saw them coming to be baptized, he spotted them quick and he denounced them. Said, you brood of snakes. John has no problem sacrificing relationships and calling out the religious leaders for the sake of the truth of the cross and an authentic gospel. We're so busy today trying to maintain relationships. We're so busy today trying to, trying to stay in with people that we're not committed to the truth of the cross. Think about the gospel we're preaching and teaching. Would Jesus have preached and taught that gospel? Would Jesus have been passionate about the things that we're passionate about? But John was not concerned about being on the end, end with the in crowd, with the religious folks. And the first thing he said, you brew a snake. I see you coming. And I'm not playing games with you. We'll, 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 we'll sit and do the two-step with snakes. Knowing that their life does not exemplify or look like the ideals of Jesus Christ. And we'll make every excuse. I'm not talking about other folk. I'm talking about the religious. I, I, I'm not talking about little Pookie out there. I'm not talking about Mr. Jolly up under the tree. I'm talking about the religious folk whose lives don't look like the cross. Their philosophy, their, the, the, the way that they treat people don't look like the cross and the life of Christ. And the first thing he said, he didn't get so happy because they thought enough to come. He looked at them and called them what they were. You brood of snakes. Not only did he call them out and call them a brood of snakes, verse 8 goes on and said, he says, prove what you're saying. Prove what you coming to be baptized. Prove the faith that you're talking about. Prove the, the faith that your gums are smacking about. Prove it by the way that you live. You see, God knows my heart when he sees how I deal with our homeless brothers and sisters. God knows my heart when he sees the way I treat widows and widowers. God knows my heart when he sees the patience and the time I'm willing to put into the children. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
God knows my heart when he sees the life that I live in front of, in front of people knowing that I'm walking around here claiming that I'm a preacher. God looks at the life that, and he says, prove. You're coming right now to be baptized because it's a symbolism that you want to, you want everybody to see that you've been baptized. He says, I ain't concerned about that, but he says, prove. So right now to me, you're a brood of vipers. You're a brood of snakes. He says, prove to me. He said, there, 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 there was no, there, there was in John, there was no fear in John. John didn't need to please anybody. John didn't need to be friends with anybody. John didn't need to spell up to somebody so that they could give him a grant or give him. God, God didn't need anything from anybody. When you learn to stand on your own, it's just me and God and whoever else want to come along. When you learn to trust God, when you learn to do like Jamaria said, just give me you, God. When you happen with just God, like John. John says you brew the states. He says prove the way you live that you really turn from your sin. I don't want to hear it. I want to see the way. I want to see the way that you're living and the way that you treat people. And the, the, I want to see the example that you're, that you're giving to children. I want to see it. He says prove the way Prove it by the way that you live. It, it, this water, this ain't doing nothing to impress me. Prove it by the way. Prove your faith by the way that you live. Bible says faith without works is dead. My faith ought to produce something. My faith ought to produce something. If you got faith, you ought not come to church mean and negative and nasty every Sunday. Right. If you got faith, the, the cashier, amen, at the restaurant when they made a mistake, uh, they, they should get cussed out if you got faith. The same patience you need folk to have with you, you need to have patience with other folk. Folk are out there already, it's already aggravating you working on a job for $9 an hour and you working 40 hours a week and, and all your and something's out taking all your money and you got all these children to feed and, and if you live in St. John's County, affordable housing is $1,500 a month for a three-bedroom and, and, and it's already frustrating enough and, and so just work with me a little bit if I got a little attitude on the job. When, when I'm finishing your burrito at Chipotle, just, just work with me a little bit. I, I'm trying to take care of children and, and I want to be there, but maybe if you understood what I was going through and, I, and threw right. a smile away, yeah. maybe it might help me smile. Yeah. Maybe if you threw a, a, a nice spirit my way, maybe it might help my spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I have the spirit of God. Yeah, when I walk in a room, it's supposed to light up no matter how dark it is. You got the spirit of God when when you show up, uh, when you show up, the, the liberty of Christ on the shore. Folks are not feel oppressed, depressed, and shut down when you show up. You speak, you speak healing, you speak liberation in your voice. Folks get hope when you show up. He says, I tell you what, right now you look like a brood of snakes to me. And he says, but you show me by your life. By the way you live, now take this thing that you're talking about serious. And then in verse nine, he drives it home. He said, "Don't just say we're safe because we're descendants of Abraham. I act like a maniac, and your claim to fame is I'm Jewish." Live like a clown. And your claim to fame is I'm a Christian. Treat folk nasty. I'm a Christian. He said, no, no. This John, he said, don't just think that your bloodline, don't just think that your title Got you covered. Don't just think you got privilege with God just because of who you are. He says, as a matter of fact, you think you so special. He see, you see them stones down there? 
He said, I can turn, he said, God can turn those stones That's right. into his children. That's right. Ain't that special about you? Your life ought to produce what's in you. And don't just think because you picked up the title that some kind of way you got approval, you got a path to treat people any kind of way. See, see, that, that, that's, 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 that's. What John is saying then is what many Christians are afraid to say now. Because they're afraid they're going to destroy relationships. They're destroyed. They're going to get on the outside and have to preach in the wilderness. They're afraid they're going to have to push to the outskirts and folk won't like them no more. I thank God when I find out people don't like me. Don't come out. That's no way. I thank God when I find out somebody else don't like me. Thank God. Because if I ever get to the place to where evil folk like me, it says a lot about me. If I ever get to the folk and get to the place to where folk that maneuver and move through this world in manipulation and deceit, they like me. Birds of a feather. Why would he give me a spirit if I can't produce? 
And he said that the acts of God's judgment is sitting there as poise. It's, it's sitting there ready because God is saying, I bless you. I, I got roots that run deep down into my power and to my anointing. But he says, if you can't produce good fruit, he says, I'm ready to chop it down. If, if you can't produce good fruit, I'm, I'm ready to bring it to an end. He said, he said yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and, and thrown into the fire. And I, and, and I thank John for speaking truth to power. I, I thank John for not allowing us to sit and think of, that we could just sit by idly and, and watch wrong being done. Uh, in the Old Testament, there's a scripture where God says, uh, I look for a man uh, that would, he said, I look for a man that will stand in the gap for the poor, for the oppressed, for the widow. And he says, and I found none. Uh, God is expecting uh, production and fruitfulness uh, from the blessings that he's given us. Uh, and I'm thankful to John uh, for being willing to speak truth to power. I'm thankful to John uh, that's willing to cast aside friendships. Uh, I'm thankful to John uh, that's willing to be castigated uh, and pushed to the side. Uh, I'm thankful to John uh, that's willing to speak the truth uh, by any means necessary. Uh, is there a witness in the house? Uh, somebody say yeah. How is it that John could care so little about being accepted by men, but care so much about being accepted by God? How did John get that thing on the inside? How is it that John is moved so little by titles, labels, and stuff, but is so driven so much to produce Increase in the kingdom of God. Somebody see it. Yeah. Somebody see it. Yeah. I ask the question: What drives this man? Where does his passion come from? Why is he so committed to the work of God? Well, I tell you what. Let's take a trip down memory lane of John's life in the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 1, verses 39 through 44, the Bible says that John's mother is visited by Jesus' mother. While both the women, both of them are minding their own minds and pregnant in their mother's womb. The Bible says that John and Jesus just resting in their mother's womb. John's mother is visited by the mother of Jesus. It says a few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea, to the town where Zachariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. That's John's mother. Both women are pregnant at the sound of Mary's voice. Elizabeth's child, that's John. Something 